Jenny McClendon, welcome back to the program. Great to see you always. Happy summer. Happy summer to you. It's great to see you as well. Yeah, thank you so much. I just have a lot to talk to you about. We got the warm months coming. I want to talk to you a little bit about your physical therapy hat, but I got to congratulate you too. I love the look of the new studio. I just think okay. that is awesome. It's just beautiful. And I think for our audience, if they go to the YouTube channel, if they go to Jenny Fit Bunch, they can see that that sample video that has a couple routines in it. They can see the um, new studio. They can hear you talk a little bit about what happens as a member. We can get into that at the end, but congrats on the new sure. studio. It looks great. Well, thanks. Yeah, it's easier to kind of go to one place and know that I can always hop out there yeah. and film whenever I can, so it's been nice. Good, good. Well, good job. Well, so listen, you know, as a physical therapist, because you have a bunch of hats that you wear, and as a professional physical therapist, why don't you give our audience a little bit of guidance on some of the exercises that you recommend for older adults that, you know, might be aerobic in nature, could be strength training, um, giving them a little bit of circuit training, perhaps stretching that kind of that range of subjects? Yeah. So, you know, I basically follow the American Heart Association and they kind of break it up the way I do with dividing it up into cardiovascular and strength training and stretching. So with cardiovascular, we really want to try and get in at least 150 minutes of what we call moderate to vigorous activity a week. So that really breaks down to, you know, 30 minutes a day, five times a week. And, you know, examples of this are your brisk walking, your biking, your swimming, your aerobics that you're doing in class or online. And um, then you can think about strength training as more things that you're doing with weights, with resistance bands, things that are, you can tell, a beginning and an end to an exercise. And the AHA recommends um, two times a week for that. I usually bump it up to three because I think it's safe and appropriate um, as long as we leave a day to rest in between. And that we're focusing on all the different major muscle groups. So. As a physical therapist, we rely heavily on muscle balance. So if we're going to work, say, the biceps, we want to work the triceps. And if we want to work the chest, we really need to work the upper back. And then um, stretching, we can do, you know, we can do stretching every day. That is safe and appropriate to do every day. And I really recommend doing the dynamic stretching, which is kind of stretching with movement before you do like a workout and then static stretching, which is where we kind of hold our stretches. That's the boring one, but that's where we want to hold for at least 30 seconds to a minute of each of our muscle groups after a warm up. And then the AHA also kind of just throws in a little line of, you know, they want us to decrease our sitting time and increase our amount and intensity over time. And then I add in the recreational slash leisure activity. Those can be done every day and not to be mistaken for our cardiovascular. So uh, things like a, um, a casual walk or playing fetch with a dog or, you know, even simply cooking to me is an activity that's better than, than sitting. So those are the guidelines. And then you can kind of play with that by picking the things that you enjoy. Good, well thank you for that. that, that's super helpful. You mentioned, you refer to intensity of exercise. I've heard a little bit about the talk test. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the talk test and if that's a good measure of a level of intensity for us to, to exert ourselves. Yeah, um, there's a couple of ways to monitor our intensity. Um, you know, one's called the perceived exertion scale and that's just kind of picking a number one through 10. And you'll see posters of that like, in doctor's offices and gyms, and that's just kind of giving yourself a rating. And then there's also monitoring your heart rate, which I think is a great way if you know what those numbers mean. You know, if you take your pulse and say, okay, it was 120, you know, what does that mean? Uh, so it's important to know how to get your target heart rate zone. And I do have a video on my channel of ex exactly how to do it because it's kind of a little math formula. Um, but the talk test is a valid and reliable way to measure intensity. And it's basically, can you talk while you're exercising? And the answer is, I, my, my rule of thumb is you should be able to say like the Pledge of Allegiance while you're exercising, 
but maybe not sing a song, right? So if you feel like you can talk to the person beside you without having to stop and catch your breath a lot, you know, you might want to tone it down a little bit. But if you feel like you could talk to the person beside you, you're probably at a good place. But if you feel like you couldn't sing a song, you know, that's kind of where we need to be. But I think it's a good and reliable and easy and subjective way to measure your intensity. Well, I, I have to tell you, uh, I'll just admit to this uh, here publicly to Jenny McClendon. I, I do like to sing along with your videos. <laughs> yeah. I exercise. You you always play the best music. And so I'm there, you know, kind of singing along. I'm not sure if I'm, you know, hitting all the right words. It probably would be indecipherable if you could, huh. you know, hear me do that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. I, like that. Same way. <laughs> I like to do it. Well, my audience of older adults, you know, we do enjoy, uh, you know, staying fit, getting fit. Absolutely. The process is important to us, but we want to avoid injuries. And so what kinds of things, again, with this physical therapist hat of yours on, what are the kind of things that, you know, we want to keep in mind to say to, to just to remain healthy and strong, but injury free, too? Yeah. So, you know, safety first, safety first, safety first. Um is just very important our end goal right is to avoid falls because as we know that can just lead to so many difficult things so in the physical therapy world this is how it goes somebody has an injury or surgery and then they come see us and then we say here's some exercises but wouldn't it be great if we could give you those exercises before Mm -hmm. and help prevent the falls and help prevent the injuries So I think of exercise as a very preventive medicine to give to help avoid falls. And a lot of times we get patients who said, hey, all I did was sneeze. All I did was bend over weird and I hurt my back. But the reality is it probably wasn't the sneeze that hurt our back. It was probably the condition our muscles and back were in that we were not able to accommodate like a quick, abrupt movement. So the treatments to help avoid injury are really just, you know, three things. One, definitely, definitely stretching because we want our muscles to stay loose and not tight. If they stay tight, they're painful. And then when they're painful, they stay tight and it's a vicious cycle to get out of. And then strengthening. So we want to make sure that our muscles are super strong to accommodate everyday activities. And then the third thing is really to slow down. So just think about your movements and your activities as intentional. Um, When we're getting the groceries out of the car, do we really need to stack 10 on each arm and make one trip? Uh No, let's slow down. Let's take 10 trips with two bags each. Or if we're doing laundry, do we really need to bend over crazily picking up wet clothes and twisting our back real quick. No, let's take a few. Let's pivot and walk over to the dryer. Let's slow things down, think about things, and then really just trying to keep our body and just just mobile. So I have the 30-minute rule. If you're sitting for 30 minutes, I want you to get up and change positions. So if you're Say you're on the computer, um, you know, stand up, take a little walk around your house and you can get right back down. But just think about slowing down, stretching, strengthening and using it as preventive measure and not wait until something happens before you start this new exercise plan. That's helpful because slowing down allows us to focus a little bit more on our balance. And you always talk about this idea of, you know, thinking ahead a little bit, the unpredictability of our real life, you know, in kind of relation to reaching up into the cupboards, doing some of those kinds of things. I wonder if you'd tell us how how do we really focus on balance during our days so that we can so that we can maintain it despite this unpredictability of our lives? Yeah, I mean, you know, part of it is there are ways to be aware and to sneak it in. And then really we need to train our bodies to be able to recover. So as we age, um, don't you hate that phrase, as we age. Yeah, as we age. I as mean, we age, this happens. It's past but, tense with me now, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> but something that decreases is called reaction time. So Say you lose your balance and you want to regroup, but that time of regrouping, you know, really extends. So sometimes we lose our balance too much 
and we can't regroup. Um, so what we need to do, just like we would train our heart with exercise or train our lungs with breathing, we need to train our body to be able to recover from losing our balance. And the way to do that is simply doing balance exercises. And sometimes when I give a patient these exercises, they say, you're trying to push me off balance. And I say, well, yeah, because we don't stand still and lose our balance, right? It's usually when we're moving. So doing exercises where we're doing multiple things such as arm swings or a lot of times I take the visual part out of it. So I'll have you do head turns while we're exercising because that's taking out the visual. Um, but there is great ways to sneak it in. Um, let's say you're walking from the chair to the bathroom. Try walking in a straight line. Try walking in a tight rope. Or maybe when you're doing the dishes, try standing on one leg for 10 seconds and see how you do. Or, you know, things like that we can kind of sneak in. And, and being aware, making smart decisions. If we're outside walking, let's, let's be aware. Let's look up, not down. Let's take our hands out of our pockets. Let's kind of slow things down like we had mentioned before and just being aware. But, yeah, balance exercises are, are key. And, and, you know, and, and we hate to talk about canes and walkers. Oh, isn't that the worst? No, don't want to talk about that <laughs> but stuff. But I know. And it's <laughs> taking a part of our independence away. It's terrible. However, it is something to maybe think about. You know, if you can walk better and more normally with a cane than without, it's probably an important thing to maybe have. And you don't have to use it all the time. But... If you're going to your grandson's baseball game and you have no idea how many hills it's going to take to get there or, you know, if you don't, you're not quite sure, it's not a bad thing to have. And it's just uh, we hate to prescribe them and, and we think hard before we do it. But it, again, safety, safety. Yeah. Well, talking a little bit about being outdoors, going to the grandchildren's outdoor sporting events, the baseball games, soccer matches. We're just now getting into the hot months. It's summer yeah. already upon us. And while being out in the fresh air is just so invigorating and so wonderful, especially after a year of kind of being in, in lockdown and kind of isolated, being outside is just wonderful. But hydration is an important factor for all of us to just keep in mind at all times when we're outdoors in these hot months. So maybe give us some tips on just remaining hydrated during these during these these often hot months that we're experiencing now. My family would laugh at this because I think water is the cure to everything. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, if a kid says, I have a headache, I say, drink water, or if I'm tired, drink water. <laughs> um, so that's the, that's the joke in our family. But as we know, water has these such great effects. And it, it seems so simple to just say, drink more water. But, um, you know, we have to think about what it does and why we're doing it. And, and hydration is key. We want to make sure that we're drinking, you know, at least six to eight glasses a day or half of your body weight in ounces. And um, with age, hydration can come a little bit faster. And so we need to just make sure that we are drinking water, not only during exercise, but a little bit before during and after. And if you're not one that loves water, I mean, you can simply throw some fruit in there or a cucumber slice. I mean, you can change it up and pretend you're drinking this tropical drink, but mm -hmm. um, keeping a cup with you at all times, you know, nobody's asking you to drink it really fast and, and fill you up. So just keeping a water bottle with you at all times is really key. And, and, and we need it because Sometimes if we feel sluggish, water can really help us. And when we feel sluggish, that's what can lead to falls. And water's great for decreasing constipation and decreasing our risk for UTIs and kidney stones and um, even respiratory infections to keep everything in our organs kind of what we say lubed up, just kind of let things kind of move a little bit better in our organs. So it really is key. And um, sometimes we forget about it, but... Keeping it with us is always helpful. Yep. I've got my 48 <laughs> ouncer right here. Go. This is my second one of the day already, too, Jenny nice. McClendon. Yeah, it, it's nice. starting to get hot here, and so yeah. I really have to pay attention. 
That's right. Really critical. Well, I want to talk for just a second about some outdoor exercises, too. You've got this wonderful new video. We're going to show it here as part of our interview with you. But I wonder if you'd do two things. Maybe maybe set up the video for just a, a moment or two. Tell us what we're going to be watching, and uh, we'll watch it. But uh, maybe at the same time, give us some suggested outdoor exercises to do, especially in this hot weather. Yeah, so look, we, we love to walk, right? Most people love to be outside and walk, and simply being outside can help clear our heads and increase our vitamin D, which we really need. Most people are deficient in that. Um, but in this video, it's a little bit cheesy at the beginning, but um, personally, when I go out walking, the outside is my playground. So if I see a bench or I see a playground or I see a curb, I light up because I try and do just a few fun things while I'm out there. Um, so in the video, I just uh, happen to come upon a bench and I just show like my top 10 favorite exercises to do simply with just a bench, no equipment needed, um, no weights, nothing, and uh, upper and body uh, exercises. So push-ups and dips and step-ups and sit-ups and all kinds of things. Um, and that's what that video is about. But now that, you know, there's so many fun, great things we can do outside. And um, do you ever play pickleball, Paul? Have you ever played you know, pickleball? I I have not played. I played tennis as a boy, but yeah. I we have a uh, a tennis court, sport court, just close to us in our in our kind of our neighborhood uh, area. And I've watched them play pickleball. It looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's it's actually. I'm I'm a, I'm a tennis player, but yeah. uh, pickleball is getting so popular, yeah. and it's all around us. And it's great for the 55 and older community. It's social and. Um, not a lot of running, and but it still has that tennis feel. So pickleball is a great thing if you want to try it. Tennis, walking, um, biking. They have these amazing three-wheel wide tire bikes now I'm seeing everywhere. And those aren't going anywhere. And those are safe, especially if you used to love to ride bikes. I think these are so great to do now. Um, and just changing it up. Like if you go walking outside... Um, I'm a little guilty of this, but if you're walking the same route each time, change it up a little bit. You know, can you go a different route? Can you go one where there's that, you know, there's hills? Can you try walking on some grass? Can you, you know, take longer steps? Can you take quicker steps? You know, just kind of changing it up a little bit. But the, like I said, that, you know, the the outside is, is your playground. You can have fun with it. Changing it up helps for a variety of reasons. Helps with the balance, walking on a little yeah. bit of uh, grass, but it also helps us with kind of just mentally too. Get a yeah. little bit of new mm -hmm. scenery, all of that uh, gets some great exposure. It is always so great to talk to you. I don't want to leave, though, without talking a little bit about Jenny's Fit Bunch because I personally love that channel. We're going to put links up to where you can connect with Jenny, especially Jenny's Fit Bunch. But as I mentioned just at the top of our, our interview today, there's a new studio. You've got a great video with offering some samples of some work that you're doing. You talk a little bit about the low-impact work that you do, the Tabata, the circuit training. And I think what's really important too, Jenny, and, and probably not everybody is aware of this, and that is that you do have this physical therapy hat that you wear, and you actually will give people some advice during your weekly routines, your weekly Fit Bunch routine with people, and you get that as being a member of the Jenny Fit Fit Bunch program. So I, I personally am a member. I, I love it. You, you don't, you know, I just think the world of you and, and you've meant so much to my exercise routine that I just think it's important to share this. So maybe tell us a little bit about, you know, all the great things that you're doing within the Jetty Fit Bunch community, because there's people from all over the world that are taking part in this with you. Yeah, it's been, it's been great. So, um, Jenny Fit Start is the name of my channel, Jenny but Fit Start. Um, if you become a member of, just like you said, Jenny Fit Bunch, you just get a couple of extra things, and um, it's been really amazing. We do a live class once a week, and not everybody's able to do it live, because like you said, we have people from around the world, but it's archived immediately, so even if you just wanted new videos, it's the place to be, because you're going to get... Um, another one every single week. And then just like you mentioned, we do, um, in my mind, when I first started at personal training, I thought, 
I'm going to give them one personal training session a week, but I'm so afraid I'm going to run out of ideas, but oh my gosh, no. So (laughs) I'm on week 22. We've had 22 different themes. And what I think is amazing is I just been asking for requests and Mm -hmm. I think it's been really, really great. So we have stuff as general as exercises with a stability ball to something very specific as, um, like you're saying, like common injury. So Mm -hmm. I'm starting to kind of do some more series with, um, you know, here, here's your injury and here's how I would treat it just in case you couldn't get to your physical therapist or we all want to know how we can treat things at home, right? We don't, we want to do that before we, we go see somebody. Mm-hmm. So we started to do some common things. My list on my book is really, really long and I'm just checking them off in, in hopes that each one can um, help somebody in a different way. So we have a lot of specific injuries, but we have a lot of good general um, treatment sessions. And then we actually chat every week. So before our class, we have a 20 minute chat and sometimes we just talk about the weather, but, (laughs) um, sometimes they bring questions to me and, um, it's been really, really fun. We just, we started in January. It's going great. I have people from all around the world and, um, the connection that they are having with each other has been really, really special. I think that's a special part of it too, because I think we all are missing one another. Well, we certainly have missed one another. I think we're, we're maybe tapering down a little bit on the pandemic, but I think the, the wonderful thing about your program is that we do get a chance to gather together. We get a chance to see you, you see us a little bit. There's just some real value. There's a lot of free resources that you provide on your YouTube mm-hmm. channel, but this next level I think is so great because there's a there's an added benefit of a little bit of a review on your part of us kind of as we're exercising and how we can be smarter about that. Yeah, it's been great. I, physical therapy is my love. I've done it for 20 years and to be able to kind of share some of what I know and some of my experiences with people, even if it's through uh, a virtual sense, it's been, it's been great. It's been great for me. It's been, I think, great for others too. Well, Jenny McClendon, it's so nice to talk to you again today. Thanks for being so generous with your time and for, for all, for everybody in my audience, you need to check out Jenny McClendon's page. We're going to put links up. You can find out information right down here about how to connect with Jenny McClendon. Jenny, have a great next couple of weeks, and we'd love to have you back sometime talking more about it because this uh, fitness is just, it's our lives, and we need to to do it. That's right. No, I appreciate you having me. It's been fun. Thanks. (laughs) Thank you. 